This is Positive Moments with Jean Walters Lucy, personal growth consultant, teacher, author, and lecturer. Hello, everyone. I'm Richard Miller, and this is Positive Moments with Jean Walters Lucy. And now, once again, here's Jean. Hello. This is a story that illustrates an important point. In ancient times, when an archer would practice his craft by shooting arrows at a target, his servant's job, while fetching the spent arrows, was to ascertain the accuracy of his master's aim. So if the arrows missed the target, the servant would call back to his master, the archer, sin, which translated meant the archer missed his mark. That's how the word sin came into existence. Today we use the word sin in other ways. Often it is used to condemn ourselves for failure that really amounts to inexperience. Often we miss our mark because of lack of knowledge, practice, or expertise. And as we gain experience, we become seasoned. Then hitting the target or achieving our goals gets easier. For example, the first time you drove a car, you were awkward and clumsy. It was hard to remember and perform all those functions with any kind of grace and fluidity. But with practice, driving became easier and automatic. If you had condemned yourself for awkwardness while learning to drive, the experience and the expertise that you desired would have come slowly amidst a lot of bad experiences and bad feelings. By viewing the process as a learning experience, you open the mind to gentler opinions and even optimism. We tend to regard mistakes as sins rather than inexperience and expect perfect results immediately instead of recognizing that expertise comes with practice. When a rocket is shot into space, radar determines whether it hits or misses the target. If a rocket misses, adjustments are made to correct the next one's path. The goal and the ultimate result is contact with the target. We can view our journey through life the same way. Corrections must occasionally be made, or we may also select a different target or change goals altogether. Eventually, we arrive at our destination. Making adjustments objectively without condemnation encourages our progress. Criticizing yourself impedes it. Apply this principle to learning any new skill. Cooking, accounting, communication, golf, investments, relationships. Each area requires practice. With practice comes success. Are you hitting your mark? This is Jean Walters Lucy, personal growth consultant, teacher, author, and lecturer. If you have any comments or questions that I can answer on the program, I would be happy to do that. Um, any personal growth subject you might want to inquire about, please email me at my website at spiritualgrowth.com, www.spiritualgrowth.com, or call me at 314-991-8439. Thanks. Well, you know, Jean, I know that a lot of us, um, when we were growing up, we experienced um, either the impatience or the ridicule of our teachers or our little league coaches or our parents when we weren't getting something or at least we weren't getting fast enough and as a result I think lots of people feel very daunted when they begin a new project they they they're afraid they're afraid of of um you the know, unknown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the unknown. Um, that fear is, is a big issue to deal with on starting anything new because of the unknown factor. When, are we going to be successful or not? Are we going to be able to do this or not? Um, you know, are other people going to be able to see the value in it or not? The, the main thing that we have to deal with is in fear is we have to look at the opposite of that, which is love. And the opposite of fear is love. That's what Paul says in the Bible. And uh, anyway, what that means simply is do what if is what we're shooting for is what we're aiming for something we love can we can we approach it with love um is it worth our doing um can we appreciate it so much that we're willing to be clumsy and awkward and fall over ourselves and make mistakes if it if it's not then we might want to relook at you know re-examine our goals and come up with something different because the learning process is one of trial and error and we're going to fall down just like a baby falls down when it's learning how to walk. It just does. Um, we don't ever condemn the baby when it falls down. We realize that he's getting stronger and his legs need that practice. And we do too. We are exactly the same way. So 
are we doing something that we love enough that we're willing to make mistakes and, and sometimes look silly in the process? And if not, then reexamine ourselves. But it's really unfair and unrealistic to think that we're going to start out perfectly in anything. <laughs> There's just not one thing in life that you're going to start out perfectly in. So we have to give ourselves a little, cut ourselves some slack on that one and be fair about it. So it's okay to make mistakes, huh, Jean? It's You know what it is? It's not just okay. It's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And what we want to do with our children is go, oh, wow, you tried. Isn't that great? And just focus on the trying. You got out to the bat three times. That's so wonderful. Every single time you swung that bat, you really tried. That is what we want to comment on, not did you make a home run, but you swung that bat and you did your homework every night and you really, really worked on that subject. Hey, congratulations. You're, you're fabulous. And that's what we want to do that with ourselves, too. Uh, you know, I guess an- another thing, too, is is goes with that is the ability to say, oops, I made a mistake, yes. to admit to it. And yes. then there's no weakness there either to say, oh, I goofed up. Yes. You know what? If you, Just saying it gives you so much power because it's like you're admitting it. You're admitting your own vulnerability or you're admitting that your own flawed nature or whatever you want to call it. But by so admitting it, you, you, you basically reduce, reduce the a weakness in it. And you, you, you're, you're also not so able or not so willing to take it personally if somebody goes, you did what? You know. So I, I just found many years ago that the more we can admit our own frailties, the stronger we really are. And you know what? Nobody cares. <laughs> That's the interesting part is nobody really cares. No, and you know, not only that, say you have a, uh, something going on with someone else and some people think, well, if I don't want to admit there'll be a sign of weakness if I admit to a mistake. And then we do silly things to cover up our obvious oh, mistake. Yes. And so we are ending up looking weak when um, if we look at something and go, oh, I see what I, I made a goof. Jeez, I'm sorry. Yeah. Then the other person, he's thinking, yeah, see, they like it too because mm-hmm. you're you're actually supporting their opinion. Absolutely. And, and so uh, they end up liking that transaction too. You're giving them permission also to be as, you know, to make mistakes also. And it's so honest. That's the thing I like about it the most. It's honest because, as I said earlier, Nobody starts out perfectly, so if you can honestly say, "Oh yeah, I I did that thing," or "I messed up on that," you know, but boy, did I learn from that. That was so good. That was one of my best experiences. And many many people have said that failure is the best step to success. Is the it's crucial to success to be able to fail a few times because you learn so much through that process. So that's the truth of life. We want to really relate to that honestly, and instead of thinking. You know, we're supposed to be these marvelous beings that, you know, do everything perfectly right off. It, that's so silly. So silly. Uh, the title of the show is Hitting the Mark. And some people think that they deliberately, they need to set very low goals. Mm-hmm. If they get too high uh, or go for exactly what they want, uh, they think they may not mm-hmm. get it. And so they deliberately set. Uh, low expectations for themselves. I see. I thought you were going to say that um, people are, are, are going to be afraid they're going to get pompous or egotistical if they set their goals too high. Oh. You know, but either way we look at it, it's true. Um, but you, you know, it, but it is really okay to set your goals high as long as you're willing to raise them once you meet them. Go ahead and set small goals, and then when you reach that small goal, then re- raise it to the next level and raise it to the next level, and ra- and that's that's actually okay because you can you can really develop some nice progress that way, and plus be kind of kind to yourself. I think you're talking about people who set their goals small and just stay there because they're so afraid of you know failing. And, you know, to me, they're, they're not getting a realistic view of themselves. They're not really honestly assessing their abilities. And stuff. But it is okay. Everybody doesn't have to be a superstar. It's, it's really fine. Um, the, the whole thing about being egotistical, you know, we've been taught, a lot of us have been taught that, you know, oh, don't give yourself credit and you'll get a big head and you'll, you know, you'll be an egotist and so forth. But I think that what if we, you know, we haven't looked at the opposite side of that. If you don't give yourself credit, the the downside of it is much, much worse than if you get a swelled head. Most of us have a good sense of ourselves, and we're not going to get a swelled head anyway. We just we know, you know, we're good at this, we're, so we're not good at that. I mean, you know, I'm, I have these talents, but it doesn't mean I'm good at everything. Um, and we're, we're pretty realistic about that. 
but um, but it's so important to be able to say I can do that and I'm good at that and and let and people need to be supportive of that rather than oh I don't like it when you give yourself credit that's so that's teaching such a a bad behavior to our children too because how can they possibly go for a job and not believe that they can do that job it's it just it's unrealistic that they can be sitting there being interviewed and be t- telling themselves the whole time oh I'm so nothing and I'm you know I'm being humble it's the wrong approach and it won't get us where we want to go a person going in for a job interview might do well to prepare similarly the way an actor prepares for a role in which they spend a certain amount of time before they actually get on camera pretending to be that role or even Absolutely. looking into a little bit what it might be like to be say they're playing a, a, a blind person and so we've all mm-hmm. heard the cases where the actor will put on a pair of blinders and walk stumble around in the dark and similarly um, while you're going into a job interview mm-hmm. Spend some time, I guess, thinking, sitting at your desk yes. or doing what it is you yeah. want to do. What What would it feel like to be the vice president of this company? What would it feel like to be whatever? And and take it in and feel it and be it. And in your mind, take it on so much that that you assume the posture and the walk and the talk and the demeanor. And then you start believing it. And when you believe it, then you're going to portray that and project it in your interview. Everything's going to work out so much easier for you. But you can't combine that and then try to be tell yourself that you're no good at it and you're not, you know, very uh, expert at this and that. And then and then at the same time try to project yourself as being capable of handling the position. I mean, those things are very contrary and contradictory, and it won't work that way. So I agree with you. It's a, it's a great tool. Yeah, you can't expect a perspective. Uh, employer or somebody who's hiring you to see you in that position if you first can't see yourself. Absolutely. If you can't do it, how can you expect that other person to see what qualities you have? It's so fun to watch kids because kids practice all the time. They're always um, taking on the adults in their life and and pretending to be the nurse or the doctor, the mother or the teacher, all those things. And if you think about it, they're practicing for life. You know, if you go back and think about the things that you used to rehearse when you were a kid, you probably ended up doing all those things, w- whether it was an airline pilot or um, a teacher or, you know, a superhero. And in one way or the other, you assume that role in your life. So it's, it's a great – kids do it automatically. They do it naturally. Well, you know, though, uh, I played with a lot of guns as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope I wasn't rehearsing for going out to being like a serial killer. I, I could have been pretty brutal. <laughs> <laughs> but when you, what was the attitude at it? What were you? Were you being the superhero? Were you, you know, saving the maiden in distress, or were you, uh, oh, you know, I was, being I was macho? <laughs> yeah, I was cowboy, lonesome cowboy, rich, or okay. our, our sergeant, rich of Easy Company, blowing away the enemy. But, Mr. Cool. Yes. Right. Okay. And so that's probably what more what the what the energy was going toward of just being in control handling this and managing that and i can do it really great you know and that was that was what you were practicing yeah we were being brave and (laughs) uh, right and uh those sorts of things yeah but it was fun (laughs) you did you know what that was another part of it it was fun and you did it with joy in your heart and it made it work so much easier and and as adults, we tend to be real serious about all of it. And, and then it's, we lose the fun component, component of that, and it just doesn't work as well. We, we really need to go back to pretend and having fun and playing with it. And we will hit the mark as we do that. It'll be so much easier. Well, Jean, uh, I think you've uh, once again helped out everybody. And um, if they uh, just practice one or two of the concepts that uh, you Uh, come forth with every uh, week on uh, Positive Moments. I think everybody will be doing a little better as a result. And uh, thanks, Jean. Thanks. Thanks for you, too. This has been Positive Moments with Jean Walters Lucy, personal growth consultant, teacher, author, and lecturer. If you have comments or questions on any personal growth subject like universal law, dream interpretation, intuition, self-esteem, or self-empowerment, you can reach Jean at her website, www.spiritualtransformation.com, or call 314-991-8439 and leave a message, 314-991-8439.
8439. I'm Richard Miller, and we'll see you for your next Positive Moments.